Okay, I am here today at Sierra Nevada in Chico, California with Rick Callow and we're here to talk about some of the uh, piping systems that they've utilized from George Fisher. Rick, thank you for being here today with us. You're welcome, Brian. And if you wouldn't mind, uh, tell us a little bit about how long you've been here and what you do here at uh, Sierra Nevada. Absolutely. Uh, in total, I'm going on 18 years. Uh, my first six years was working as a process piping contractor on site. And then in 2003, I hired on staff and I've been uh, the head of the process piping and most of the projects uh, at the brewery here today. Nice. So you are um, using a lot of our cool fit pre-insulated pipe um, versus some of the other technologies like, you know, insulating metal and, and stuff like that. When did you first hear about that and start using our uh, cool fit pipe? It was from a trade show. Our, our owner is quite uh, progressive and he always looks for the new technologies. In 2007, he came to us as a, a piping group and said, hey, uh, this pre-insulated pipe looks pretty interesting. Do you guys think that it's a, a good fit for our business here? And we weren't sure. We actually uh, just had to sort of trial it out. We went through the training with the George Fisher folks. We got our first piping on site. It was the 140 millimeter. And we ran about uh, 100 and so feet of it, and, and we liked it. Uh, How long ago was that? 2007. Wow. OK. Um, so the, that, that uh, pre-insulated pipe, what is the process that that's being used for? We exclusively use it for uh, our glycol system. We run a 26 and a half degree Fahrenheit propylene glycol. It's a 30% mix with water and it uh, is a central plant. We use it uh, throughout the entire brewery. There's probably more than a mile of our piping that's installed in the George Fisher pipes. So normally when I think of uh, glycol for cooling, I'm thinking um, smaller diameters, two or three inch. And I thought that was, what was kind of interesting about this uh, installation is that you've got some relatively large pipe for glycol. And, and a Absolutely. lot of capacity and a lot of volume. How big a pipe you, are you using here for the glycol lines? You know, you're, you're absolutely right, Brian. Um, breweries, by nature, take a lot of process cooling. And being that we installed a central plant, just one location, and piped from that to all of our fermentation cellars, we started off with a 16-inch diameter. The electrofusion piping, we ran a couple hundred feet of it, and then broke it down to 12-inch diameters, which is the, the socket welded with the, uh, with the glues down to 10 in some areas. Most of our headers are in the 10 inch diameter. We then reduce to some sixes and some fours and then down to our points of use, twos and such. So prior to using the cool fit, I'm guessing you were using various metals, maybe copper, carbon steel, a little bit of both? Yeah, because of um, our volumes, we had a lot of six inch needs not knowing about the cool fit product back in 2097, we did use Schedule 40 carbon. Um, kind of looking back now, wishing that cool fit had been available because we, we have had some problems with it. Um, the insulation doesn't hold up over time. Uh, if you start to get some breakthrough with your vapor barrier, you will rust the pipe and you'll develop some spaces of, uh, of moisture egress and it then leaks that rust into the ground and uh, surrounding areas. Now, switching gears a little bit, it's my understanding, and I didn't know this before, but you guys also are using our, uh, our fusel system for a lot of your waste. And you've got, I'm guessing, aggressive hot liquids because you're always cleaning uh, you know, your product and, and uh, your, your equipment throughout the plant. Tell us a little bit about that. A absolutely. The, the fuse seal uh, products offered by George Fisher are wonderful. They have handled are very high temperatures. We discharge to a drain in excess of 180 degrees. And we learned through trial and error um, what not to use. We melted ABS, we destroyed standard dimension ratio, we tried different types of PVC, CPVC. CPVC worked, but the fuse seal was just the product to use. And we retrofitted a whole bunch over the course of three years. We have now hundreds and hundreds of feet of the fuse seal in operation. Okay, and it's all pretty much buried in underground. It has been. Um, one of the items that I, I think is, is uh, interesting to note was a lot of our work takes place around the clock. And to bring a piping crew in at 2 in the morning to work in an exposed trench was quite expensive. The fuse seal line is so simple to run and to learn. 
we eventually taught our concrete company how to fit those pipes and to fuse and weld them. And so now they dig the trenches, put the pipe in, do the electrofusion weld, cover the trench with sand, and then fill the concrete back on top, and we're out of the picture. So that's just how flexible and easy that pipe system is to use. Well, very good. So we have uh, some plastic pipe on the cooling side, on the waste side, and uh, so far so good with the plastic. Uh, any issues over time from a maintenance standpoint? It, it's been fabulous. I would hazard a guess of upwards of 2,000 uh, solvent cemented joints that we have made and only one leak and that was probably just because we didn't get enough glue in the joint. Um, our 16 inch pipes which were electrofusion welded I mean that is a big system and you don't want to mess up and yeah. have a problem. Not a drip out of any of that. It worked really well. Well great. Well Rick thank you very much for your time today. You're welcome Brian. And uh, another video from George Fisher uh, out here in Chico, California. Thanks.